yet, but you have some public here. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so are you ready to start? Uh, one minute. One minute. Oh, come on. After this show, one minute? Really? So just so you know, guys, I guess if you're here, it's because you like robots. Who likes robots here? Who is into robotics? One. I see one there. OK. Some people here. OK. We're having this stage. Besides having the molding stuff and astronomy, we also have robots. So we're going to have robots all day long. Tonight at 9, we're going to start with a bot meeting. So if you like robots, if you ever made a robot, or you want to make a robot, and you want to meet someone that made a robot, we're going to have all the people here. All the robots that you see around, they're going to be here just talking. Nothing prepared, not like talking here on the stage, nothing serious. It's just showing robots and showing what they do and how they do it. So if you want to meet people into robotics, that's the time, 9, today. That was about a minute. Yeah, OK. <laughs> OK, so this Benoit, he's coming from France, right? He's coming from a company called Aldebaran. They make these robots, and now robots. And well, you've seen a little bit of what the robot does. Pretty cool. But you can do way more. And that's why Benoit is here. So first of all, thank you for coming, buddy. And thank you guys for coming. All yours. OK. So uh, for starters, I will uh, let Nao introduce himself a little bit. So now he should stand up and talk. Hello, my name is Now. I'm a humanoid robot, imagined and manufactured by Aldebaran Robotics. I come with a software and I'm fully programmable. I'm autonomous and I can connect to the internet. Through Wi-Fi, I can recognize your face, answer your questions, play music, grab objects, and even play soccer like a pro. I have more than 2,000 brothers and sisters in use, all around the world, in universities and research laboratories. Do you want more technical details? No, thank you. Well, I guess that's so, enough for the moment. I guess it's thank you for listening to me. Start. Hello, I'm uh, Peter Kern. And, so, uh, after these few words of introduction, I will be in charge of the rest uh, of the presentation. Visual uh, interfaces uh, for music. So Stateless removed. Uh, so, I'm coming from the French um, company. I want to talk a little robotics. bit about visual interfaces for music. So, the, the uh, workshop that I produce this robot. Uh, goes and I'm going to tell you a little about this. where the robot comes in from and what have, you can do with it. Um, I think two, two so, speakers uh, first, a few words about the company in itself. We used to be uh, a startup media. company, but now so we I'm are six years old, and uh, there's musical a little less than and 200 people working for Aldebaran now. So mainly um, uh, technical people, like engineer and PhD. At Does dim everybody hear me? Is it okay? And uh, we're a little mm -hmm. limited in space. And uh, so. So Lots of technical people, like engineers, PhD, but also salesperson, marketing, able to see communication. The so we'll have to. I'm we have just trying uh, to make three up for those offices. With the the company was founded in France, in Paris, and, and try to where the headquarter is across. and so where the robots are by the way, designed by and manufactured. That uh, but we now we have uh, smaller commercial here, offices in Boston and in Shanghai in China. European so, uh, up to this day, we sold more um, than 2,000 robots all around South the world, American mainly to laboratories and universities. There. So, so the, even if the company really took up, off you know, when uh, this uh, robot here was chosen to be the standard platform of the RoboCup. So if you don't know the RoboCup, you have teams um, present you uh, rise up just over the corner. But this is a competition of robots playing soccer. I, I have no idea who uh, you are. Well, I know a couple of you. I have now, no idea who uh, most people are. We are a commercial so company. So, kind of uh, that's why I wanted to remind you. 
uh, with this slide I got from the, uh, the communication right. department. We're so not very good we're developers. trying to sell robots to make people this happy. Right. So we've got a kind of a mix of developers. For the people but who we're not are developers, selling any kind of robots, of not bathroom cleaning robots, robots not industrial robots. Today. We're making how many of you have ever used interactive uh, robots like this one? So that means language. humanoid robots that can talk to you, see what you do, and react to what you do. Okay. Wait a minute. Uh, and the long-term goal developers. of the company is to have uh, service uh, robots, so uh, robots outside. that okay. can so help a mix of people, people in their daily life, that's for example. Good. That's exciting. Robots um, that can help older people. I that's my name. That can I'm help younger uh, people European in education originally. tasks. I'm from. Uh, I grew up uh, in Kentucky. Or for example, lived uh, in New York when I'm not and have lived doing in this kind of presentation, I'm so uh, work. I'm my real at. job is in and a team where we develop the, uh, applications for this robot, create digital as opposed music. to teams in um, R&D that you write like the tools today, or write uh, see more software libraries. Of this stuff. Uh, on a screen uh, for the robot. So and not be my job is on a temple. project Careful. where we so, um, design and develop two applications for digital music and children with autism. Motion. And so we talk uh, every day maybe you know to them it's a uh, developmental disease and, music and children with autism are known to be attracted towards to robots and, and mechanical and things. electronic devices and, um, in general. Um, so we are I'm trying to benefit Feeds take advantage of this uh, attraction toward robots to and and build um, theoretical so or educational like behaviors. Today, that's another place to direct anger and resistance. So we are not just so selling wanna, this robot to, to well, actually, laboratories and universities. Question, the question, There's also ask, one way one. you as individual programmer can have one robot like, like this, and this is called the developer like program. Left, uh, right brain, or so on the left the side of the room, or something the is there. I don't ID know. beyond um, this deal is not that. So, and and some of the rest of you are not musicians, we'll but are curious. Give you a robot if you give us some money. Okay. So How many people can read music? Yeah. Oh wow, cool. Okay. So, okay. but I'll assume the rest of you can't. Does everybody? Does so everybody hear me So we have this now? interesting thing, no? and th this okay. is why it's it's okay. th the having the hardware workshop uh, right so after So I was this telling, we have um, this uh, community sets up of, a kind developers. of a nice comparison. Uh, so one of the things that I do, aside from uh, writing, where for a I'm a writer and a musician. Fee with and respect I have a, to the price a that we so I do know sell the robots to uh, academia. You can get so one now. robot just like um, this, and all the, the needed that I do is tools, uh, software tools that I'm going to show to later. On this open source software project, plus the uh, I work on this cross compilation stuff, the a simulator uh, of the robots and when you do to make the design, development of. Something that you'll see less easier. of, I think, and we Canada's also part. provide but when uh, you're in non technical the tools world, like you really have to make dedicated tough decisions. forum, dedicated because website for hosting you know, your source code. Every knob that you put on the hardware costs money provide, uh, and two takes years up space and has a circuit in this sitting behind uh, developer and you program want them spaced and, out. and so access to the now store, so which is our application store, where we can distribute or sell the robots. Behavior so when you do this kind of thing, you have to make tough decisions. So when you do this kind of thing, you have to make tough by the, physical the application world. that you write. Not only by cost, and but as all part kinds of, of this, uh, uh, all kinds of elements program, of we have so regularly when you meetings when you design where something all the community to, gathers. To for example, there was one in Paris in spring, medium, and there was you, there will be one in your, a your, few your weeks in London. Your choices have all these boundaries and constraints. When we work with software, so. Uh, now, what we can this robot we, do? We have something so a lot closer to this. humanoid robot. We have a, just a complete... Uh, with 25 degrees of freedom, so we can make lots of nice movements, as I showed earlier. And that's a computer, so he has lo all the things that computers have, like a CPU on the head, which is an Atom, Intel Atom. He has a Wi-Fi card. I'm not using right now because uh, the Wi-Fi environment is a bit overcrowded. So I'm using the um, Ethernet plug on the back of the head. Uh, there is also a USB plug on the back of the head. So, but that's not only a computer, that's an interactive robot. So you have lots of sensors, starting with the tactile sensor here on the head. You have three buttons. Uh, you have cameras, so you have a camera in the forehead, not in the eye, in the forehead, that is looking uh, straight in front of us, and there is one camera in the mouth looking down at the feet. In the eye, you actually have um, infrared captors, so you can zap uh, the robot with a TV remote control. 
the hand also have uh, tactile sensors. And here on the feet, you have bumpers, so you can know uh, when you bump into an object. And what did I forget? Yeah, I forgot the inertial sensor that is in the, um, in the torso, as are uh, sonars to detect the, um, for example, walls or obstacles in the environment. And you have uh, microphones all around the head, so you can know which way the sound is coming from. OK, and now, before going to the more technical part, where I will show you how to actually program this uh, robot, I made this uh, layer architecture diagram just to show you what's running on this robot. So on the bottom, we have the hardware layer with uh, all the motors and sensors and CPU, etc. In order to let that run, we have the operating system, which is a Linux kernel. Uh, and then all the low-level functionalities are provided by a middleware that was developed uh, at Aldebaran that we call Naoki, and which provides several APIs and libraries. For example, uh, you, we have the AL Motion library, uh, which provides API for all the motor primitives, like put your hands here or go to this, to this X and Y position in the space. We have, for example, uh, this AL object recognition, which is a um, vision, uh, vision learning library, where you can teach now to recognize an object, for example, a red ball. And then when the robot sees a red ball, it will raise some event. We also have. For example, uh, what we call the behavior manager. It's what I will be using to start applications. It's used to, well, start, stop applications, install applications. And uh, there are also some libraries that we did not develop ourselves, but that we uh, took from the open source world, like Kernman, which is the connection manager that handles uh, Wi-Fi connections and the reconnections. And we have uh, bindings to various languages. So you can write your programs in your favorite uh, programming language. I, I will be using Python. And you can run that on the robot. So now I will, in the rest of the presentation, I will concentrate on the rest of uh, on the, the mo most upper layer that I call application. It's any interactive. Uh, program that you can run on the robot. So I showed I showed dances uh, before the, the start of this session, but you can have other applications where, for example, the robots get some content, content on the internet and read it loud, like the RSS reader, or Follow Me, which is a nice application where you can uh, actually walk the robot taking his hand and we, he will follow you. I can show that later. OK, so now let's start to make an application. So for this, I will be using uh, a tool that we developed here in Aldebaran. Yep. OK. Uh, so I will be using this choreograph tool. So it's choreograph in French, which is the French name for choreographer, uh, which is the guy that uh, designs the movements that dancers will execute in a ballet or something like that. And I think it's a, it's a nice name because it really says what the, the, the software does. So here I'm connecting the software to the robot. And now, in this, in this robot view, in this robot view, you have um, a virtual robot that is the image of the physical robot here. So, if I move the robot, you see it here, and in the other way around. Oh, 
if I put stiffness in the robot and then I want to turn his head, the robot turned his head. So these uh, functionalities are just to have a basic control on the robot, on the robot itself and on all the, for example, sensors of the robot. We have, for example, a video monitor here that, uh, so this is the camera. This is the stream of the camera uh, in the robot's forehe forehead. So now, if I turn the robot's head, you will be the camera moving. Okay. Now, suppose you want to make some nice movements, like the dancers that I showed earlier. So this is a bit complicated, uh, but we have tools to do that. So, uh, so chore choreograph is not just um, a way to control the robot, it's also a graphical programmation tool. So you can actually make programmation, make a program to run on your robot without having to uh, type to write code because you just have to take boxes so this is the main concept of uh, this programming tool. These boxes you can execute and uh, behind these boxes in Choreograph Engine, th this will produce some code that will have the desired uh, behavior on the robot. So you have different kinds of boxes. What I want to show you now is how to make the robot move. So this is what we call a timeline. So I hope you can see you can read this, it's a, little, uh, it's a little small. So, you see that on this box, you have uh, squares here on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. So these are the inputs of the box and these are the outputs of the box. And this is the start of the behavior. What will happen first when I will play uh, with, by clicking this button, the behavior on the robot. So now I'm linking my box to the beginning of the behavior. So when I will play the behavior, uh, the thing inside the box will be executed. For example, I have a say box here that will make the robot say hello. Hello. OK. Bravo. This, this is not a totally interactive application, but it's a nice start. So I said I wanted to show you how to let the robot move. Inside this kind of box, we have what we call here a timeline. So we have the time here. And at a given instant of time, you can set articular positions. For example, I want you to raise your arm up and to turn your head. Okay. And, and here at uh, 30 seconds, I will want you, I, will, uh, I have a clicking problem. Up. I will want you to go in that other position with the head on the other side. So this is the very basic way to uh, edit the motion of the robot. We have more complicated tools like this one, where here you can see the different commands that are given to the different uh, motors. And you can edit that, saying that... <coughs> okay. You can define very precisely the different command that will be sent to the robot. And you can edit the way the the robot will go from one position to another. So the interpolation of what will happen between these two defined positions. 
so I will not spend much more time on uh, these tools to make the robot move because we provide uh, tools to solve the technical aspect of the problem, but making a really nice dance that, uh, like we showed earlier, it's not a technical problem, it's more like an artistic problem, if that makes sense. That's uh, character animation, as in Walt Disney or Pixar or things like that. And that's complicated. And most engineers don't have the skill or the will to, to do that. So, actually, in Aldebaran, we hired professional animators that uh, produced um, uh, an animation library. So we have all kinds of emotion or standard gesture like uh, hi, these kind of things. Uh, we have a quite big library with different flavors of exhausted or angry or things like that. So I will make a, a small demo. So first, I will let the robot stand up. And then I will make the, let's say, angry number three face. Okay. Yeah, I want to connect to the robot. Okay, and let's go. So, uh, this was when I was a little pissed off, but not too much. So, from, so this was to, to show you that uh, you can render feelings with this plastic box that don't have proper eyes or don't have a proper mouth. But uh, with skills, animation skills, or with our animation library, uh, you can do that. So, now for the rest of the session, I will try... Oh. <coughs> Sorry, that was a crash. Uh, for the rest of the session, I will write um, an application, a small application, where the robot will stand up, will say something, and then we'll ask you, oh, what do you want me to do? And what I want him to do is to show the red ball tracker. So it's a nice feature that we developed where the now is able to follow a ball that I will show him. Okay. So we will we will start with this stand up box. Okay, no. We, we will first say something, so I will show you the say box. So the robot will say something. Now, if I go inside the box by clicking here, I see inside the say box, we have this localized text box where you can input text in lots of languages. And then this uh, localized text box will go into this say box. So you can uh, remark that this link here is black, whereas this link here is blue. I don't know if you say that, if you see that. Okay. So our links are typed. So black is just uh, an impulsion. It's just a trigger for the next box. When blue is for a string. So it's no surprise that the output of localized text is a string and the input of the say box is a string. So the robot will say, hello, I'm Campusero, which is the name I defined for this robot. Let me stand up. So now if I execute this behavior, Oh, no, sorry. I'm not connected to the robot. That's why. So I'm connecting to the robot here. Uh, 
Uh, sorry about that. We have lots of troubles with all the Wi-Fi in the in the tables over there. Up. Okay. I'm in. So now. No, I'm not in. Okay. Hello, I'm Campasero. Let me stand up. So this robot just uh, told the text that was inputted on, in the box. So now, after saying this, the robot will actually stand up. And if he's already stand up, he will not move. Uh, so that's nice. But imagine we want to put that behavior on another robot whose name is not Campusero. Uh, we will have to edit the behavior. So I will make something nice here. I will get the name of the robot from another box. So maybe you don't see I'm modifying the box with a percent %s. So that's Python syntax. And I will explain later. But for now, I will go in the library. We have this get name box that uh, actually gets the DNS name of the robot that's Campusero. And we will uh, use uh, something that we call a parameter. It's like an um, environment, li uh, environment variable of the box. So he, sorry, I will edit the say box here to add one parameter to add one parameter, uh, which I will call host name, host name, and uh, this parameter will be a string. OK. And then I can link the output of the get name box to the parameter, which is the, um, the, the range. And this will automatically take the parameter uh, from the box and put put it uh, in the say text box. And now I have to do one more thing. That's editing editing the Python script behind this box in order to get the parameter. So that's a little. Uh, okay, I don't know if you're able to see much. Yeah. OK, this is only Python, Python syntax. I'm just copying and pasting. I'm just copying and pasting some code to uh, make sure that this say text box can get the parameter from the other box. And saving, and now it should Hello, work. I'm Campusero. Let me stand up. OK. So this works. Now we will do more exciting stuff. Uh, you so. So first, we will add, we will add a sit down box at the end of our behavior. So I will just sit the robot so it's easier for him to stand up. OK. Now we'll make uh, the stand-up operation a little bit more uh, robust. You see that in the stand-up box, you have uh, two outputs. One is success, when the robot actually stood up. And one is failure, when, for some reason, the robot could not, uh, could not stand up. So if the robot cannot stand up, we will make him say something like, ouch, maybe I should stay on the floor.
So this is the failure, and in this case, the robot will say will stay on the floor like that. And if the robot actually managed to to stand up, we will go to the rest of the of the application. So the rest of the application is this choice box that I will explain later. So I'm just linking the stand-up or, in case of failure, the sit-down box to the rest. And now you see it's beginning to be a bit crowded here. So I will uh, separate all functional blocks to make it easier to understand. So we have another tool that we call a flow diagram here. Uh, so, I will put all these boxes here of the stand-up sequence in this, uh, in this other box, like that. So, I'm cutting and pasting up. And so, now when we are in the in the top level of our program, we just only see a box that is called init sequence. Okay. Now, after the init sequence, we will make some interaction, some verbal interaction with the robot. So that's what we're doing here in this choice box. So in the choice box, you have one question that the robot will ask, like, what do you want me to do? And then we have this, uh, these words here are the choices that uh, will be expected by the uh, voice recognition engine on the robot. So the answer can be nothing. I don't want you to do nothing, or uh, follow the red ball. So I, uh, because I want to show you this uh, red ball tracker, or maybe only ball if the voice recognition only understands ball because it's a lot. It's really noisy here, so um, I don't know if it will if that will work. So. Uh, and then, in order to process what is uh, the, the output of this choice box, I will have a switch case. So if we understand nothing, we will do, we will directly go to uh, end the sequence where the robot will sit down. So if the robot understands nothing, we will only, we will, oh, no, up, up. So I'm making one other flow diagram to contain other boxes. And the sequence. Okay. So, in this end sequence, we will have a simple uh, sit down box. And we will let the robot say something. We will let the robot say something like, oh, it was nice to play with you. So let me get this right. So it was nice to play with you. So let's test this. Hello, I'm Campusero. Let me stand up. 
Okay, and now he will stand up. What do you want me to do? Nothing. Nothing. It was nice to play with you. Okay, so it was a bit long to come, but we have an interactive application. And now we'll go to the interesting stuff, actually, the red ball tracker. So if we understand ball or if we understand follow the ball, we will go to another block. Um, Up. We will go to this to this tracker. Okay. We will go to this red ball tracker. Up and up. So let's go. Hello, I'm Campusero. Let me stand up. What do you want me to do? Follow the ball. Ball. Okay, I'm sorry about that. It seems that with the light here, it's not working. It was working over there. Uh, so I will try to make that again. Hello, I'm Campusero. Let me stand up. What do you want me to do? Follow the ball. Ball. So maybe we can try to see what the robot actually sees. No. Okay, sorry, I think I cannot make that work now. Uh, so instead, uh, before going for some questions, I can demo other behaviors, interactive behaviors that we have. But I hope that uh, the little programmation that I did here showed you that you can uh, actually have uh, behaviors, create behaviors, without having to know too much about Python and programmation. So, I will, uh, I will show you this follow me application that I told you about. I want to come with you. Ah. 
Okay, this is one of the nice things that we have we can demo. Uh, I think I have time so for one more uh, application before we, we go to questions. So I will oh I will show you uh, an application that we call Guess Ports. So it's a little game where the robot will mimic some sports and you have to guess what sport it is. Well, well, well. Okay, it seems we have some problem here. Okay. I will try to go with an. Show me a red ball to make me walk. Okay. Let, let, let's try it this way. Okay, so now, like this, it's working. So, uh, <coughs> so uh, the red ball tracker. In, in this red ball tracker, now we'll try to maintain a, a constant distance to the ball. So we will move to the ball or move back if I, if I get the ball too close. Okay, uh, I, I see so, somebody with a red shirt. Maybe sometime. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's okay, but it happened that in the audience there is uh, somebody with a red shirt and now I think it's a ball, but uh, it's okay. Okay, so maybe I can begin to take questions, and if I uh, if I can show you other applications, I will do that afterwards. Hey, can I have a question about the sensors of each motor? I'm interested if if each motor has its own sensors. So the computer recognize where the position of his arm is, or the position of his head. Uh, yes. So the oh, I'm sitting the the robot. Stiffness removed. The all the motors have their own sensors, so you can know what the position of the articulation is at uh, at any point in the. Um, in the timeline that I showed you, you know, where they were the curve uh, giving the position of the robot, interpolating, interpolating between two positions, uh, you can actually monitor the the position of the of, of each of the motor. Yeah.
Hello? Hey. Are there any plans to have this robot uh, think for itself at one point, say, make decisions or, uh, you know, real-time movement if, uh, say, an obstacle comes in its way, if it's uh, walking? So, uh, this is a question about artificial intelligence at some point. So, well, artificial intelligence, it's a software problem, and as a company, we, see, we sell the hardware and some smaller software. So, if you want to try to make now intelligence, you can try, but it's a complicated problem. The, the state of the art in robotics, it's uh, like the RoboCup, letting uh, robots play football, and uh, with all due respect to football players, it's not the highest function uh, that we can call artificial intelligence. So, right now, uh, now is used as a research platform in artificial intelligence, but the state of the art with such a small machine, this is not designed to be a really record breaker machine, it's designed to, so that people can actually buy one someday, not today because it's expensive, but at some point. So uh, it has limited power, CPU power, and limited sensors. So it will be complicated for now to be really, really intelligent. Hello. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, I have noticed that the robot can dance. No? Yeah. And uh, uh, I'm curious whether the robot can really respond to the music or, or it can do a uh, dance meet, uh, with uh, some specific music. Okay, so uh, the dances that I showed you earlier, it's only choreographed movement. It's a set of movement that is only repeated. And for example, if the robot falls, it will sense uh, it falls and it will stop, or, or it will go up and continue the dance. But, for example, when now does this um, uh, acrobatic movements, there is no dynamic balance control. So that's one point. But then, if you want to create your own application where the robot dances and reacts to music, and in the same time uh, keeps uh, dynamic control of the balance, you can do that. Actually, it was done uh, by somebody at Aldebaran. We have an application that is the autonomous dancer, where the robot will have some small dance movement like that, uh, corresponding to the rhythm of the music in the environment. So this is something that we can do and that we did. So the robot runs Python, but is there a Python interpreter running inside the robot in the Intel at Atom, or is the Python pre-processed at the computer? Uh, I think it's the, there's a Python interpreter running on the robot. Uh -huh. There's a... Yes. Right. <laughs> there's a, a Linux. The, 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 the operating system is a Linux, and in the newer version that is running, uh, on this robot, you can actually uh, run the virtual machine of what is running on the robot on your computer, and you can do whatever you want. Um, is it available? Is, a, is there a public API to program the robot in C++ or C or something more directly? Uh, yes, so uh, in, in the tools that come with this choreograph software, you have uh, more technical tools, like uh -huh. the cross-compilation chain and things like that. So you can compile uh, your library in C++ and download it on the robot or flash it and, uh, and then execute your program. Mm. Okay, thank you. And yeah, what I did not show you, uh, so some of the boxes that I showed you were only plain Python scripts, but uh, there is a way to link your C++ library inside the choreograph box. So you can use any, any library you found on the internet or any library you created yourself.
So maybe I can show you some other. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just taking two minutes. If you will stand up. Or maybe not. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I cannot get that to work, so... Uh, hi, uh, I just want to ask is, uh, if uh, if it's possible to use the program, the choreographer, mm -hmm. uh, for another kind of robot, um, except this one. Uh, uh, like if you mod the application uh, for use for your robot which you built. Uh, so in the company we have this small robot and there is a research project with lots of French robotics laboratory. Uh, where we build a bigger robot, uh, one meter thirty humanoid, that's called Romeo, and that uses the same tools, the, the same now key middleware that I was telling you about, and the same choreograph tool. So we already have two robots running on that um, software, and it's only a matter of the three D model of what your robot looks like and the motor and the articulation and things like that. I think there's a big XML file describing all that. And if you want to use Choreograph for a new robot, you just have to build that model, that XML file. So it works, we did that for two robots. Thank you. So this was Benoit. Thank you for the amazing dances. I love it, love it. And you guys loved it. So uh, I believe you're leaving today, right? Yes, but I will be available uh, at some table here if you want to discuss, if you want to have goodies like badges, etc. If you want to ha have more information about the developer program. And one thing I did not say before is that uh, we are currently hiring a lot of people so if you want to work with this nice robot in Paris or somewhere else in the world right I'll you give you my CV just in case so you guys didn't listen anything he's not looking for people no jobs I'll just give you a couple of CVs and that's it yeah. okay. done okay thank you very much he's gonna be right there so thank you buddy And if you want to see more now robots, we, are, we actually have a bunch of now robots there in the soccer field. So if you want to ask them questions, these are users, probably pro.